Welcome, welcome one and all. I love science. I may not be a witch, but here I am. I'm the science witch, and we're getting back on schedule, back on track, and everything. So we're doing a controversy and opinion video. I may be changing this to basically the guide for a guide to the internet, because that seems to basically be what this series has been. Every sort of controversy or opinion has been about the internet, and the problems and how they could be solved and where these problems are coming from, I guess. So that might be a better way to categorize these, but I'm not sure right now. But that's basically what this is. The Science Witch's Guide to the Internet. Nothing that I say in these blogs is to or in these vlogs is really to be taken um too closely to heart. I mean I don't have any authority over anything on the internet. I only have the only authority I'd ever have would be my own blog on Tumblr and any of the other social media things that I am a part of. So, the topic for today in my guide to the internet, basically, is more specifically for Tumblr. Um, oh no, no, actually I think this could be categorized for um, a few different webs, different um, social medias and everything, but it's tagging your content. Tagging your content is basically the f no, let me rephrase that. Tagging is basically the filing cabinet of the internet, or of specific websites like Tumblr, Twitter, Vine, Instagram, all those social media things. Tagging is basically the filing cabinet. Okay, so let pic let's picture this. You've got a desk. On your desk, you've got all your paperwork, all of your different posts and pictures and everything all that is, sp is spread out on your desk it's a mess it's hard to work with what are you gonna do with all the stuff on your desk you can't get any work done you can't add more stuff and no one's gonna be able to find anything that's on your desk because it's all just cluttered so tagging is a good way is a fantastic solution to this that I see a lot of people use it, but yet there are still a lot of issues with people not using it, which I'm going to get into. But again, like I was saying, file ca or desk, everything's on it, no one can find anything. Then you got your file, you bought a brand new filing cabinet, it's a hashtag. It's the hashtag brand filing cabinet. That filing cabinet is your best friend. Now you can separate every little thing that you have on your desk into certain categories so you'll be able to find them easier. It's like within those and within those drawers you got sections. In those sections you got all your stuff. It's so much easier to find and it's easier for people who are looking for something specific to find and for you to just get yourself out there, I guess. Oh. Uh, for for example, um, I made a post on Tumblr a while back that has to do with uh, Jacksepticeye, and it's like, um, uh, you remember that psychic meme where it's like, psychic reads my mind, me, blah blah blah, well it was that, but it was psychic reads my mind, me, Jacksepticeye intro, or just top of the warranty laddies, my name is Jacksepticeye in all capital letters and everything, and then just screaming at the end, and then the psychic's like, what the fuck? And that post has about 1,400 notes, because I tagged it specifically as Jacksepticeye, JSE, all the different anagrams for Jacksepticeye. I don't think I tagged it as Septiplier, because that doesn't really correlate to Septiplier, but I just tagged it as Jacksepticeye-related things, so... Because it was funny. I thought it was funny, and apparently a lot of other people did too. Without that sort of tag, I don't think anyone would have seen it. I mean, I'm not trying to say that that one post had like such a huge impact on my blog or anything. It's just sort of like an accomplishment because it's like, I'm not used to getting that many notes on a post. I'm still getting notes till this day on that post. And every time I do, it just makes me smile because it's like, I made that. That's my baby, it's my child, and look how many notes it has. So it's sort of like, um, it brings attention, which can bring like pride to you, and more attention to your blog, possibly. I mean, 
I'm I don't think people just um, just start from the bottom and just post stuff and then boom they're popular which I am not but that doesn't happen you use tags and everything and when you get far enough I guess you really don't need to use tags that much anymore but that's when it, that's for personal stuff for personal posts and everything but uh, what I want to talk about more specifically is fandom tags. One of the things I see most commonly happen within fandoms is the clashing between NSFW portions and the regular fandom portions. Some different fandoms have specific tags for NSFW that people aren't following, like um, the Undertale fandom for example, there's an NSFW section and there's a regular fan base section. The regular fan base section is just Undertale, under T-A-L-E, but the NSFW one is Undertale, which is under T-A-I-L. Why they decided to use tail, I don't know. But they just do and that's how it's supposed to separate it and I believe Toby Fox said like look I mean it, people are gonna do it anyways but just tag it correctly keep it out of the main tag which is the same for a lot of fandoms some people want to just be able to scroll through their fandoms tags and see fan art without having to see their favorite characters fucking And it can make some people really uncomfortable, especially with the kind of content. So, and a lot of people get into arguments about it over certain content being in the main tag. Because, believe it or not, there are children on this website. And again, I'm speaking more specifically about Tumblr, but this goes for really any site. Like, um, I, I know on Vine, I've been just scrolling through my feed and... Boom, font cest, and I'm like, whoa, that's not what I was expecting. But, you know, I, I just scroll past it and don't pay much attention to it. But there are, like I said, there are small children on these websites. Like, I know this personally because I started Tumblr when I was 11. Now, when I was 11, I was in sixth grade, I think. I'm pretty sure I was in sixth grade was my first year at, an, at, at this um, theater program and I met this really awesome person, Veronica, and she introduced me to Tumblr and I would always watch her on Tumblr and everything. I'm like, I'm gonna make one of my own. So I made a Tumblr at the age of 11 and I didn't use it for a long time, for like another like year or two, but I still had it. So that really sort of, I mean, that's a plain example of someone fresh out of elementary school going on these websites and I know tumblr is um tumblr is a website for I believe on the app stores for 17 plus but I mean come on who's actually gonna listen to that does anyone really ask their parents for permission before going on a website no sorry Nickelodeon but we don't ask our parents and we just do it anyway. I remember I used to think it was the sneakiest thing to join on a website or something without telling my parents or without asking my parents. Now I'm getting stuff in the mail from petition sites because I signed petitions. There are small children who don't need to see these kinds of things. I didn't want to start middle school. I didn't want... I mean, looking back at it now... I started reading NSFW things and seeing NSFW posts in 7th grade. Now I was either 12 or 13 at the time depending on what point in the year it was, but I feel like I was still 12. Not good. Oh wait, no. I might have been 10 in 6th grade. You know, never mind, never mind, doesn't matter. I was either, I was aged from like either 10 or 11 in 6th grade and 11 or 12 in 7th, whatever. But. I shouldn't have spent middle school seeing these kinds of things. I was just learning about sex, about what it was, and yet when we got to the sex portion of health class, I knew everything. 
I aced that. I blew through that section. Because I already knew it. From Tumblr. Which, despite me getting good grades on that section, isn't good. I was an innocent child. Just a small, innocent child. In fourth grade, I was using yardsticks as crutches because I was that small and innocent. I swear, I was like 4'7 at one point in like sixth grade. It was really, really tiny. I'm only 5'1. But I was tiny. I was innocent. I didn't need to see that kind of stuff. My internet history would surprise a lot of people my age. And... You know, I'm open to admitting this because, you know, the past is the past, I can't really change that, and that makes me who I am today. Creepy. And weird. Doesn't change much, does it? I don't think I would have seen the kinds of things that I did, unless if they weren't tagged. Or if they were tagged. Because there are ways to blacklist things that you are uncomfortable with seeing, and Again, me, unfortunately, being the creepy 7th grader I was, I didn't care, so I didn't think about blacklisting anything. But other people do. It could be triggering for some people, especially if the content is violent or um, gory. That could really, really trigger people. That's why there's a lot of different trigger warnings you can put in tags, which is, again, a very good thing because it can have a serious effect on people. The internet is supposed to be some sort of like safe haven, I guess, and just a way to kind of get out of reality or real life and just kind of like go into somewhere where you can be whoever you want and just and just be who you want to be. And you shouldn't have to worry about being triggered like that, just going through your blog, going through your dashboard, doing your daily thing. That's why tagging is so important. I mean, like, I have, on my Instagram, I have a little sort of mini gore series going for, like, art. Like, I have, um, I drew, like, a zombie, I drew, like, this other thing, and I'm drawing, like, a hand with medical tubes going through it, and I'm sculpting that. But I tag that as gore, I tag it as dismember- disfigurement, dismemberment, medical tools, and just so people, they don't want to see that, then they won't, because I don't know if you can blacklist things on Instagram, but it's still tagged, there's still a warning. But a lot of people don't do that. And it can be hugely troubling to people. And like I said, that is uh, one of the many reoccurring arguments I see on Tumblr as I'm just scrolling through my dash. Like, um, like I was talking about earlier, I've been recently seeing a lot of fighting about the Undertale tag because some people tag it as both as both tails, both Undertales, and it's like that defeats the purpose. But I understand you want to get your work out there, but see NSFW stuff, children don't want to see that. Unless you're me in seventh grade. Creepy. They don't want to see their favorite characters being pile-drived, for lack of better terms. Look at your post. You think, okay, there's blood. Tag it as gore. Tag it as blood. Tag it as violence. Just don't be afraid to go overboard with the tags. It can be kind of annoying on like Instagram or things, but at least you're making it safe for the people around you and for the other bloggers around you. It makes your experience on the internet much more enjoyable for yourself and for everyone because you're not being bombarded with angry note, not with angry letters and asks in your ask box about, you didn't tag this correctly. Like, my, one of my favorite things is someone um, getting mad at someone who posted a picture of a pomegranate and someone's like, uh, can you please tag your gore? Because they thought it was like an open heart or something and it's like, that's a pomegranate! What's your problem? You don't want to go too, too overboard, but you want to make sure everything is safe for the people around you and you just want to sort of make sure that you're not upsetting the people around you. And if people are bombarding you about something sort of crazy, like the pomegranate thing, 
don't be afraid to tell someone be like look if you don't like what I post if you're uncomfortable with this one post unfollow me and unfortunately that happens a lot someone can post one thing and lose a bunch of followers because it wasn't it either wasn't tagged properly or people just don't like it and that's just how it works that's not gonna change everyone has their own preferences likes and dislikes and their different comfort zones so being careful with what you post and how you tag it is incredibly important so anyways that about wraps this thing up uh before i go i have a quick question for you guys should i um should i shorten my intro recently like i've been doing my videos and everything and i'm like all right my intro seems kind of a little bit long and it's kind of a mouthful because i've had you have no idea how many takes it it i have to make just to get it right once but i might i'm thinking about changing my intro let me know what you think if you think it's too long just tell me you know there's a comment section for a reason you comment on it um but either that or should I keep or if, should I keep it the same way? Let me know what you guys think and um, I will take into account the results I receive if I receive any. But as of right now it's gonna be it's gonna stay where it is or stay how it is but um, Again, for like the fifth time, let me know what you guys think. So anyways, thank you guys so much for taking your time to watch this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, take a stab at that like button to let me know. And I hope to see each and every one of you sometime in the very near future. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Bye!